Hi folks, this is Kerry Burns from the Cannabis Corner, and I want to first of all start out and thank all of the viewers out there for watching the Cannabis Corner videos and going to our website at CannabisCorner.us. Uh, we are not going to release a video this week, but I am doing this uh, audio podcast, and uh, I thought that that would be something interesting to do, and it's sort of a preempt into uh, next week's video of what we're going to be talking about, but... You know, all of y'all out there, we've tried to approach our government about getting cannabis legal and drugs in this country because of all the problems it causes, all the deaths from the cartel violence south of our borders, all of the street gangs in America. All the, there, there are just reason after reason after reason why cannabis shouldn't be illegal. First of all, it's never hurt anybody, never killed anybody. And we just generate just tons and tons of problems for our country. But on another end of what we're doing, too, we're preventing the hemp industry from occurring and what that's doing to our farmers in America. Now, recently, farmers have been seeing an increase in some of the uh, revenues because of our sales that we've been having to do in our grain grain and uh, sorghum to to produce beef to sell to the mainly the Chinese and the Japanese. They seem to have this insatiable appetite for for beef and stuff like that and it's causing our prices to go way up and uh, you know just for instance in this country alone we grow about 305 million acres of various corns like uh, various crops like corn sorghum oats barley rye wheat rice soybeans peanuts cotton potatoes and different types of canolas and and a whole host of other types of things other than our fruit and nut crops which we're not going to include in this discussion tonight but uh, out of that 305 million acres that we harvested we actually lost about uh, probably 12 million acres due to just uh, you know lack of poor poor planting and stuff I mean we lose most of our crops on our yields from what's planted to what we harvest we you lose anywhere from five to ten percent so when you when you take those up into account and all and corn for example we planted we planted probably around 85 million acres of corn and we harvested around 81 million now you get about 152 bushels of corn per acre and uh, this translates into about five dollars and forty cents a bushel for the farmer which is around seven hundred dollars an acre and that's it's one of the upper yield when you look at uh, things like oats that only brings about 240 a bushel and the harvest also is not 152 bushels. It's more like around uh, 50, 50 to 60 bushels. So you can see oats is probably brings them in a couple hundred dollars. But when when we start to look at the hemp industry and the amount of revenue that the farmer could be generating, we it's just insane that our country is going the direction it's going and the and that we keep digging this deeper and deeper hole we have no jobs out there we're looking for some sort of spark to spark this country and all this country uses 20 million barrels of fuel oil fuel a day that we export about 75 percent of it from foreign lands not counting what we export here i mean what we produce here in our own country if we grew in this country less acreage than what we spend on all of these food crops that I've mentioned here a minute ago, around 200 million acres, if we grew that much hemp in this country, not only would we generate all the fuel that we need from foreign oil, I mean, we could totally replace all of our foreign oil, but we would be generating, a, you know, a, a, just an ungodly amount of money that we could be putting into our economy that, that would stay here in the United States. And hemp, these hemp strains that we're growing and all, these these could be grown, if they're so worried about the uh, THC content, at least on the hemp portion of it, we could grow the, vrain, the, stri the strains that have no THC, measurable THC, and nobody's going to waste their time to try to, you know, harvest it and all that and smoke it when, it's, when it doesn't have the THC in it. So, but it's just absolutely insane that we even use that as an excuse is beyond me, but, but when you look at the breakdown of what an acre of hemp is going to bring the farmer versus what any other crop other than tobacco. Now, tobacco is one of those crops, even though we only plant about 300,000 acres in this country each year. Uh, but the good thing about it is you get around 2,100 pounds per acre when you grow tobacco. And right now the current price for tobacco is around $1.75 to $1.80 a pound. So tobacco farmers are doing pretty good per acre. They're making around $3,500 an acre. 
you look down at the uh, potato farmer, he's probably number two of the crops, legal crops that are grown out there. And uh, it's only because he can harvest about 28,000 pounds of potatoes off of his his uh, acre. And uh, for that, he gets around eight cents a pound for it. So he's making probably 1500 to $2,000 per acre. Uh, you can go on down through the other crops and all, and uh, those probably are the top two, 3500 for the uh, tobacco and uh, the potato farmer, he's making around 2000 But most of your crops like corn, they probably bring six, $700 per acre. Barley, probably about, uh, you know, a little less, three or 400 oats around there. Hay, you know, you get about, uh, the current price is around $120 a ton. And uh, they're probably going to make about four or five tons per acre. So they're looking at about $600. Even rice, where you get, you know, quite a bit of uh, pounds uh, per acre on rice, five, 6,000, 7,000 pounds, but you know, you're looking at about 12 cents a pound. So there again, you're around six, $700 per, uh, per acre for what's being produced. If we look at the hemp though, strangely enough, if we get the 30 barrels of oil we're talking about, now folks, when you, when you produce the 30 barrels of oil off of a acre of hemp, that doesn't, that isn't the only products you get from that. The oil comes from squeezing the seed, first of all, and the product that's left, the squeezed seed, is an excellent feed for cattle. So all of this corn that we're growing, not only for uh, gasoline additives like ethanol, and also what we produce for silage to feed our, our animal crops and stuff like cows and things. I mean, you know, we of that 80 million acres that we harvested on the corn, 25 million of it went to produce ethanol. Okay, add that 25 million to the to the hemp field and see what we can produce. And when you run the numbers, it's insane. With just the 30 barrels of oil, if we just did it at half the going rate of oil right now, the farmer would be making more than the tobacco farmer makes just off of the oil. That doesn't include the six tons of hemp seed that's left over that can be fed to cattle in replacement for uh, silage that's grown in this country and all. I mean, even if you just take the the pounds, the price they get for pounds for silage and all, instead of this feed that you'd get from the hemp seed, which is going to be more more nutritious and certainly easier to produce, certainly cheaper to produce, and so you can feed the cattle cheaper. And, and not only that, but it makes food prices for us cheaper. But... Uh, you know, you look at the 30 barrels of oil, we're going to save at $50 a barrel. We're going to bring in $1,500 on that acre right there just for the oil. If you take the six tons of seed as a feed and all that, you're looking at another $600. Hemp fiber, we're looking at a ton of hemp fiber. If we use the 1940 price when the government brought back the hemp for victory period and all, when it was running about 10 cents a pound, that's $200, although the current uh, hemp market is way higher because there's not that many people growing it around the world. It's in big demand. Uh, you take the 5,000 pounds, two and a half tons of hemp herds, which you can produce everything from dynamite to paper to, I mean, you name it. The Just the, the wholesale value of it's around $750 an acre. And when you add all that in, the 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 amount anywhere from fifteen hundred to twenty four hundred dollars for the oil, the hemp fiber two hundred seven hundred fifty dollars for the five thousand pounds of hemp herds, and the cattle feed and another six hundred dollars in all. We're looking at around three thousand nine hundred fifty dollars per acre that the farmer could be making, double what the potato farmer makes, four or five hundred dollars more than the tobacco farmer makes. But you know they're already planting three hundred fifty thousand acres of tobacco in this country. We produce around. I don't know, it's like 7 million pounds of tobacco each year is being is produced, something like t uh, equivalent of 7 mi 719 million pounds of tobacco, which is around 1.972 million pounds a day. And uh, when they say that the cannabis users in this country, we use about a ton a day, which is 2,000 pounds. So, you know, the cigarette smokers, even though the, there's probably about the same number of cigarette smokers out there as our cannabis smokers, the cannabis smokers is using about a thousand percent less. So, you know, you're not going to grow, even though the tobacco farmer is going to make, you know, thirty five hundred dollars an acre. You're not going to be able to grow 50 million acres of tobacco because you don't have that many people smoking it. In the same way with the cannabis, there's going to be a certain amount grown for 
for smoking and the rest, the big bulk of it is going to be squeezed for the hemp oil. And once the oil is squeezed from the seed or squeezed from the flowers or squeezed from the leaves, all of that can be returned to the soil. The seed itself goes as a feed. The, uh, the, the leaves and stuff, once the uh, oil is removed, and it's removed by uh, steam distillation is one way to do it. Another way of doing it is, uh, is uh, with petroleum ether, which, which 100% of it can be reclaimed after your distillation. So you don't really lose anything once you, once you steam it out or, or distill it. But uh, the the if if you add up all the costs of that and all, and that this doesn't even include what even if you got a dollar a pound like you do for tobacco, say a dollar a pound for cannabis, dollar seventy seven actually that's what tobacco is. Say the cannabis was selling for a dollar seventy seven a pound. The there's around six thousand pounds of cannabis produced on an acre of soil when you grow it in in the style of hemp, growing it like hemp where you're planting forty seeds per square foot. So 6,000 pounds of hemp flowers, even at $1.77 a pound. I mean, we're talking, I'd have to say a dollar a pound. That's $6,000. We're looking at the potential of around $10,000 an acre for the farmer. And we'll not only be growing a better feed to feed our cattle, it'll be cheaper. That way it'll bring feed prices down. We don't have to drive the price of corn and sorghum through the roof just so we can grow enough beef to supply the Chinese and, and Japanese market, which causes our food prices over here to go up. You know, wheat prices, uh, things like that, they haven't been going up at this tremendous rate like you see in the store and the food prices and stuff. This is all being done because of what we're exporting overseas to supply their insatiable appetites. They can't produce the amount of beef they need to, to feed the billions they have over there. So they depend heavily on the United States and the farmers here. But but our farmers, if you look at the amount of money that they're bringing in per acre, they're they're really getting ripped off. And and the hemp is a is a better way to go. It not only brings in more money, but it also produces a better feed and it eliminates 75 percent of the oil that we have to bring into this country every day and revenue that could be put into our economy and one i'm sure that would generate this job shortage that we have right now for all the the nine or ten percent of americans that are unemployed and desperately looking for work i'm sure that if we put that kind of money into our economy which would be in the billions per day I mean, come on, folks, 20 million barrels of oil a day at the current prices. Do you know how much money that is? That's a lot of money. And if you put that into an economy, you know, it grows tenfold in the amount you put into it. And so we're we're talking about an industry that could generate, you know, easily a trillion dollars in revenue and create thousands upon thousands of jobs. And it's one that we can do fairly cheap. Hemp seed is cheap. I mean, we produce six tons of it an acre. It's cheap. It's, uh, I don't, where's this country at? We don't, you know, we, don't, we just don't, we're selling out to these foreign countries, it seems like. They're not only getting us on the oil that we're having to buy from to keep our gasoline going in our cars, which we could easily grow here with hemp. We're also getting screwed at the grocery store because they're buying up all of our sorghum and grain that they're using now to feed cattle and stuff and causing our beef prices to go up and results in everything going up in the store so you know come on america we're it's just like america's going sliding down this giant tube of of just for that's being sucked up by these foreigners and we have no money all our money leaves because guess what we pay more for everything and we don't have to and we're all worried about our kids smoking marijuana my god if your kids are going to do anything you better hope they're smoking marijuana compared to the things that are out there that are legal like alcohol and cigarettes that collectively kill over 700,000 people a year in this country. I mean, come on. Wake up, people. Statistics. Look at the statistics. Sure, nobody wants kids smoking marijuana until they're, they get developed adults and all, but I guarantee you it's not going to be killing them. It's not going to be taking them down like alcohol would do or cigarettes or prescription drugs, which takes out another 150 or 200,000 in this country a year. I mean, come on, folks. It's, it's, it's a proven fact. Cannabis actually is one of the safest therapeutic substances out there. It's an herb. So we don't want our children getting hold of it. Of course we don't. But if, if the children are going to experiment, and they do, cannabis would be the safest route for them to do. It's not going to affect their brains. It's not going to affect their development. 
it's it's not going to take them down an alley of addiction. It's not going to make them hardcore alcoholics or hardcore cigarette smokers or pre- worse, prescription drug users at all. So that argument really doesn't carry much weight, particularly when you're looking at the fact that this country is desperate for an industry that we already have, one that this country was founded on. Our early founding fathers, growing hemp, using hemp, hemp products, smoking cannabis, they all did that. And there there weren't any problems because nobody was creating some fictitious problem with cannabis like they did in the 30s when they outlawed hemp and, and the resultant making cannabis illegal in, in, the, in the beginning of ruining countless of millions of people's lives because they chose to use a safe herb over something more dangerous like alcohol. And the fact that we sit around and allow these laws to stay in place, we fill the jails up, and we release all these hardcore criminals out there that are nothing but more trouble on the streets, these gangs, and the gang violence, and the fact that we allow fifty to 60,000 people die south of our border just so they can bring marijuana into the United States is just absolutely insane. I, what what brain are we working on here, folks? It's certainly not. It's certainly a dysfunctional one that the government must have hooked up. Because when you run the numbers, I mean, if you just just take a glimpse of the hemp numbers, just a just a passing of it, you do so much better than any of these other products we could be growing. And and then when you look at all the problems that we breed by keeping the hemp industry down, it's just insane. And the fact what we do to society as a whole in treating people the way we do. This country is based on freedom of choice. It's a person's God-given right to use cannabis if they so choose. It's way safer than anything you have legal out there. I, I don't understand why anybody's ever even bothered by it. They never. It's not like people who are smoking cannabis right now. They don't do it out in the open. They're not doing it. I mean, all these people say, oh, the People who smoke cannabis. Oh my God! When do you ever? When are you ever around it? Unless you're smoking it yourself. Most people do it in the privacy of their own homes, and they don't hurt a soul when they do it. So America, w- wake up! We need the hemp industry, and kids smoking marijuana is not a big enough of an excuse to not make this happen. It has nothing to do with that. This is all based on money, and th- the sad thing and the sad reality of it is, is that we're spending more money than anybody ever could possibly gain by keeping this illegal. Let's wake this country up. It's time to do it. Look for next week's video. We're going to do an in-depth study of kind of a this brief synopsis of what I just talked about. But we're really going to talk about how it impacts our farmers here in America and, and how they could be doing so much better. And not only they could be doing so much better, but food and fuel prices could drop by half for us here in America. What would that do to the economy if we could drop our fuel price down to below $2 a gallon and our food price is about half of what we're paying right now? Don't you think people would then would take the extra money and go out there and buy the other products that everybody else in America is trying to sell? What would that do to our economy? To me, that's a shot in the arm to the economy. But we have people in power, the powers that be. They're keeping this from happening because they have plenty of money. They want the control. They want the power. They don't want people to be able to make it, to be able to have it easier and all. They want them to have it harder. And the pharmaceuticals industry knows they're doomed if they legalize cannabis. It's going to just do away completely, if not 100%, 90 90 to 95 percent of all of the dangerous prescription drugs that are killing 200,000 people a year are going to be replaced by cannabis that kills nobody. Wake up, America. Wake up, America. Thank you very much. This is Kerry Burns from the Cannabis Corner.